Today with FrameMaker 11 we're going to work again with tables. And we're actually going to do kind of a fancy little trick with tables. It's something that's been around for years, but not everybody knows about this. Here you can see what looks like an ordinary table in front of you, and you can see this got the word product in column one, price in column two, description in column three. And the trick is that this text is being inserted autom automatically. Notice that I can't backspace it out. Uh, I can't edit it. And the reason for this is because this text is actually part of the paragraph definition. If we were to go to the numbering level, you'll see here that this paragraph is called C1, and you'll see down here that it actually is defined as product. In fact, if we wanted to, we could actually um, update that to upper lower case. Now one of the little tricks is, I'm going to do a control Z and put it back where it was, one of the little tricks with FrameMaker is that when you update a table definition from the table designer, you make some sort of change, it will actually remember whatever paragraphs are in the first header row and in the first body row. This is the header row up here that will repeat if the table breaks across pages. So our goal is to be able to do this. We want to be able to insert a table called price table voila and actually have this text drop in automatically. So in order to do this properly let's go ahead and revert back to the save document that has none of the definitions that we just used. We're kind of starting from scratch here and we're going to show you all the steps required. It's really quite simple. So first of all we have to have a table to work with. I'm going to use one of the default tables format A with this particular document. Now what I need to do is to define three paragraphs, one for column one, one for column two, one for column three, that has the auto number feature dropping that text in that we were just looking at. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and first of all name the paragraph C1 and then I'm going to go down here and type in what I want it to say, in this case product. As soon as I hit return it prompts me to add it to the catalog and it has just been added there. Now let's go over here and do the same thing. Let's name this one C2 for column two and all I need to do is just consistently use uppercase characters so it's a little more logical and we'll make this one be the um, uh, the product price. Once again it's added to the catalog. Finally in the last column which we're going to call C3 we're going to change this to description or I can even call it product description. There it is. Now let's go ahead and uh, close that up. And as you can see that actually did work. Um, the only problem we have is that uh, product description is a little bit crowded. So what we're going to do is redefine this table here to have a little bit more room for product description. And uh, the price doesn't need to be very big. And the final thing I might want to do is perhaps I don't want the table to go out quite that far. Okay, now I'm actually pretty happy with this uh, table the way it looks right now. And as I mentioned earlier, um, when you define a table or when you update a table definition in the table designer it will actually remember whatever paragraphs are in those first rows of the header row or the body row. So it's actually going to remember these three paragraphs C1, C2, and C3. So here's all, here's all we have to do. We just need to give this table a new unique name so it will be added to the table catalog. And I'm going to call this price table and I'm just going to put it in all caps so it stands out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and apply it and once again it's added to my catalog. Now I've mentioned the catalog several times. Here's our paragraph catalog. You can see C1, C2, and C3. And let's take a look at the table catalog. Notice there is a uh, table there that we never had before called price table. So let's see what's happened. If I were to go ahead and create what I did originally, insert table, format A, go ahead and insert that, you'll see that we get a table that has no text in it. So let me go ahead and delete that, just get rid of it, and let's let's go ahead and insert what I just added to the catalog. If I insert a table called price table, ta-da, like magic, it has inserted that automatic text that is coming from the numbering level. So instead of having numberings, we, numbering, we have text prefixes. In this case, uh, one of them is giving us product, one of them is giving us price, 
and the other one is giving us product, descript product description. So that's just how simple it is for you to update your documents or your templates so that every time you create a certain table it will automatically populate it with the um, correct text and the correct spelling. This of course can save a lot of time, save a lot of errors, and it's really great if you have somebody helping you out who doesn't use FrameMaker very often. This concludes our brief demonstration with tips and tricks with tables.